I hope this podcast can inspire you to always dream big and make it your reality. I am your host, Jess Williamson, a serial entrepreneur and business coach. And today I have Emma Isaacs on the podcast. She is the founder of Business Chicks and she has an incredible story. She has recently just launched her newest book, The New Hustle, and I can't wait for you to hear what's in store for this episode. If you don't know Emma's story, Emma is a university dropout. She started her first business when she was just 18 and she started Business Chicks in its current format when she was 24. So under her leadership, Business Chicks has grown to be Australia's largest network for women, which they reach more than 500,000 women each year and run more than 100 events a year. Some of their past speakers include Richard Branson, Sarah Jessica Parker, Elizabeth Gilbert, Brene Brown, Nicole Kidman, and so many more. Amongst all that, Emma has six kids, four girls and two boys, and she's been living in the USA for almost six years now. So Emma has such an inspiring story and so much wisdom to share. So we're going to jump straight into the episode so you can hear it for yourself. So, hey, Emma, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Uh, It's so exciting to be here with you. Thank you so much for the invite. You're welcome. So we are here to celebrate the launch of your newest book, The New Hustle, and it was amazing. I have to tell you, I have never read a book this fast in my entire life. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Really? Normally it takes me a few years because I'm the person who starts a book and then I'll get onto a new book and then I'll come back to that book. But honestly, it was such an easy to read and easy digestible book. So loved it. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. But there's so much I want to chat to you about on the podcast today. So we're going to jump straight in and jump in the deep end. So I wanted to chat a little bit about, obviously, this past year has caused us all to reassess why we're doing certain things and what we're doing and learning to slow down a little bit as well. So what was the biggest lesson you learned this past year? Because I know that you've had your own challenges as everyone has. Yeah, that's an awesome question. I want to start with as well. Listen, I think there's not a human on the planet that hasn't been affected in some way from this past, you know, call it 12 months, call it 18 months. Um, And I'm certainly not immune to that either. So uh, firstly, massive business challenges. Um, My company is Business Chicks and pre-pandemic, we produced about 110 live events. So we'd... um, uh, you know, produce speakers like Richard Branson and Bob Geldof and Seth Godin, Ariana Huffington, Sarah Jessica Parker, Liz Gilbert, you name them, we've probably um, had the pleasure of presenting them. So that was a huge part of our business. So when the restrictions came in and live events were banned, obviously a huge amount of our livelihood was swept away. So that was just a practical, okay, great. (laughs) How are we going to manage this and what do we have to do? And, you know, one of the first things that we um, obviously had to do was um, rationalize costs. So unfortunately that meant that we had to let a few people in our business go, which is the worst job for many leaders, me included. No one likes um, to do that at all. Um, And then we had to really reimagine how we were going to show up for our community and, and serve our members and what that meant. So one of the first things we did as a leadership team, um, and I'm, in, in a lot of ways, I'm living the entrepreneur's dream. You know, I um, started the business 15 years ago and I moved to California. I live in Los Angeles. Um, I moved from Sydney, Australia uh, six years ago now, and I put in a wonderful CEO into the business and a leadership team. So in a lot of ways, I have got this, uh, you know, kind of unique perspective that my business is run operationally by a really fantastic team in Australia. And that frees me up to think and to strategize from you know, remotely. So a lot of the lessons that we were kind of already had learned over the past six years of me not being in the business um, really played out when we all had to go remote and work our way into a new way of being uh, when the pandemic was announced. So, um, you know, so as I said, we had to rationalise costs, we had to let some people go, we had to pivot uh worst overused word of 2020 and 2021, um, all our offline events into digital events. So we were pretty quick to the game. You know, we um, got a few events off the ground, I think within a week of the pandemic being called a pandemic. And that was really great. Um, So we really just tried to show up for our members and serve them and meet them where they were. So 
yeah, rationalizing costs was one, pivoting our products and offerings, um, and then really kind of studying the way we were going to get through this, not just from a sort of mental health perspective, but also how we we're going to still be standing as a business, you know. Um, and, you know, my heart breaks for Australia right now because even though we did it really, really, really tough here in the US, you know, our schools were closed for 13 months and we we're in lockdown for, yeah, it's, it was extraordinary. Um, so as well as trying to save my company, uh, I had a little newborn guy um, and, you know, I had five kids that were needing to be homeschooled. So that was a whole other full-time job. So really the impact and the lessons learned from the last um, period of time have been huge. Um, but I think, I think the biggest things are really looking at what is important and what matters and being able to have the space and time to recalibrate all of those questions that we forget to ask ourselves because we're so on the autopilot of our lives and we just get up and we go do our thing and we, you know, probably work in jobs that we're not entirely satisfied in or we stay in businesses that aren't doing as well as we hope they would do without really being thrown any decent amount of perspective. So for us, you know, that introspection and questioning and curiosity about how we could do things better was probably the biggest thing that we took from the last, yeah, little while. Wow. It's been um, obviously a roller coaster for you in the past yeah. year, but you've done it so well. And I'm sure it didn't, maybe didn't feel like it at the time, but, you know, it looked seamless from the outside and, you know, you've just continued and what you shared in your book is, you know, you came back to the why of why you started Business Chicks and it really does shine through. So congratulations yeah. on that. Thank One you. of the most common questions that I hear from my community and online is how to make a business a success and not just a hobby whilst juggling kids. So I have a lot of friends <laughs> and people in business and they sort of say, yeah. I have kids. How can I actually, you know, run a successful business? So I thought, who better to ask than yourself with six oh, kids running a global business <laughs> What would be your biggest piece of advice? And I'm sure it's oh, listen, day by day. Yeah. <laughs> listen, Jess, I mean, just before I came on this podcast with you, I had to yell at my uh, 10-year-old. She's got a friend over right now. They just walked in from school and they were making slime on the bathroom floor just outside my office. And I had to say, honey, like close the door and whisper. And, you know, so it's it never it never really ends and nothing is ever as it seems on Instagram or, um, you know, as people would like you to perceive their lives as you know I mean it's a it's it is definitely a challenge every single day I've found that um, you know your mindset is a massive thing so really trying to choose to see uh, you know the juggle and having a family and having a business is an absolute um, you know privilege which it absolutely is um, and then trying to create systems around you and then trying to have amazing people around you as well so um, you know, I don't want to sit here at all and say that I have any of the answers, but I do know that, you know, the weeks are generally quite um, organized because I have a system, you know, I'm lucky that um, my kids are range, range in age from 12 down to 14 months. So the big five are out of the, um, out of the house during the day, five days a week. So that's really great. Um, and I do have some help with my little guy who's at home. So, but really, you know, trying to work out how to maximize my time, how to do the things that are most important, how to concentrate on the activities that are going to bring most leverage in my business and actually going to change the game or create more revenue or more innovation or whatever it is. So I'm always been, I've always been someone, and I think this is because I had um, a very, very early start in entrepreneurship. I had my first company when I was 18 years old. So I really had to learn you know, how to get things off the ground and how to activate others and how to focus on what was important. So for me, I try and delegate um, the stuff that um, can be reasonably done by other people. I try and delegate that out to my team. I really try and look at and understand how we make money as a business and how I can impact that bottom line. Um, so I'm not, and then we, we talk about this in the book, we go into quite a bit of detail about this. Like I'm not focused on running around doing my bookkeeping. I'm not focusing on building a personal brand. I'm not worried about social media. I just do the things that are going to create the biggest impact. And for me with a business our size, it tends to be, you know, how do I lead my middle managers and how do I create a culture where people feel they want to come to work and they want to show up and they want to do their best. Um, but really, I mean, we need a whole episode on how to manage the juggle. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it really is, again, just getting really, really, really clear on where your time should be spent and how you can maximise that time um, and everything else. Jeez, I don't know, Jess, it's just, it's, it's, it's chaos and it comes back to trying to appreciate 
you know, what you're given and trying to have the right mindset every day. And that's easier said than done. I appreciate that. There's many days that I wake up and go, oh, I can't do today. And then somehow I do and, you know, start the day with a bit of coffee and with a little bit of wine and you just have, you know, I mean, I, I think, I think, and you might've had this experience as well, what, um, you know, living and, and trying to scale and build businesses in this time has really taught me and taught a lot of my friends who are also in similar situations to really be a lot more gentle with ourselves and be a lot kinder and, you know, not, um, not put as much pressure on ourselves as we always have. So I've certainly um, relaxed into a lot of those ways of being and I, I'm meditating every day and I'm, I'm just trying to take it a little bit more s- slowly. And, you know, I'm encouraging my people to um, try and, you know, act in that way as well because I think a lot of people's mental health is suffering at the moment and a lot of people don't have the resilience to, to sit in the uncertainty. So I'm really just trying to, encourage everyone around us to see that we're all doing our best and you know we can't control anything and just to be kind to ourselves ultimately yeah no such incredible lessons I mean for anyone I'm not yet a mom and and I think those those principles still apply really really strongly and I think these days we're also bombarded with so many different messages as business owners you have to be doing SEO you have to be doing Instagram you have to be doing all of these things yeah. But in reality, you don't have to do all of them. Like you said, what are mm. the things that are going to move the business forward and focus mm. on those? So one thing I did love in the book was your what for principle. And I think yeah. that is the most tangible way to think of that exactly what you said. So mm. can you share a little bit about this? Because honestly, this was one of my favorite parts. Um, <laughs> and how did you sort of realize this because sometimes your brain might have just been doing that automatically but to teach other people how to do that is super super valuable yeah yeah and this one requires a little bit of sensitivity and a little bit of compassion as well because you know we have to give ourselves a little bit of slack as human beings and that we do wake up and we do the things we've always done and we have say you know we we eat whatever's in the pantry we don't think about it we go to an office or we go to our dining room and we just we are living on autopilot without questioning what what needs to change right so this idea and and the book um, which you're talking about Jess um, is really condensed I suppose my lots of my wisdom or my experiences and stories have been condensed into 77 what we call anti-rules and one of the rules in the book is um, I encourage people to think about the question what for and really this is a question that comes up um, you know with the people who are closest around me um, you know in my business and I also encourage my team members to, to think about this question all the time because what happens is we can um, fall into the trap of thinking, you know, like we had an example in our, we, we have an all hands meeting every Tuesday and we had an all hands meeting yesterday. And, um, you know, someone was talking about writing an article about something. And, you know, I, I just, again, very gently said, oh, like what, what for, <laughs> what are we doing that for? And, and the person who was, you know, sharing with the team, she was like, oh, um, oh and she didn't really have an answer and it's just it it was a it was kind of a lovely little illustration of oh yeah like I there's no real point to do this like it is actually not going to move the business forward it's actually not going to change anything it's actually not going to give us any further outcome and I think this is where my interest and curiosity lies because I think in um, not just entrepreneurial businesses I think in wider corporate businesses how we've traditionally measured success is by the input right like how much work we do how much time we sit at our desks how much sleep we don't get how much um you know how many emails we write rather than I I don't care for any of those things you know I care for the output I care for what the results are and how we've actually grown as a business and grown as people so yeah I'm glad you like that rule it's what for it's just it's just really encouraging people to question why they do certain things and can there be a better way do you need to stop Uh, doing certain activities start doing other activities or continue doing the same ones so again it just comes back to interrupting and interrogating the why we do the certain activities we do in our careers and in our businesses because um we don't always need to yeah no I love that it's just it's super simple as well but Mm. so many people overlook it I guess and don't necessarily see you know why why we're doing those things so I think that is really really amazing Good. So I really just love how always open and honest you are, you know, you sort of share in the book that it's really, really important to always own your mistakes. So I would love to know 
what is one of the biggest, I guess, mistakes, but also learnings, you know, as you've been throughout your entire journey? I mean, you've been in business since you were 18, like you said, and I'm sure there's been a lot of lessons along the way, but what's one that's always stuck with you and that's really, I guess, left a massive impression on you or taught you something really, really valuable? Yeah, that's a great question. I think particularly as females, um, we can fall into the trap of wanting to please everyone we come in contact with and we can fall into the trap of, you know, um, I don't know, sort of adopting a, a, a nice, you know, we, I mean, we all need to be likeable and we all need to be personable and we all need to be fair and, and you know, hopefully respected and respect others. No one's, no one's doubting any of that. But I think there's a conditioning that comes with being a female leader that you have to act a certain way in order to remain liked and also get ahead, right? So I think some of the biggest mistakes I've made in business are when I've had the wrong people on my team and I've taken far too long to let them go because, you know, relationships are really, really, really important to me and I, I want to ensure that I'm doing the right thing by everyone that I come in contact with. And, um, you know, it's just not always possible to build a fantastic culture if someone's not performing or is not getting on with someone else. So I think some of the biggest mistakes I've made is, um, yeah, trying to be liked for a little bit too long and trying to imagine the problem away and trying to believe that things are going to get better. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of life that we have to release people at times as horrible as it can be for leaders um, and as challenging as it can be to realise that someone didn't work out in your company. It's, it's an awful feeling for, for them and for you and for the, perhaps the others in the business as well. So I think, you know, I think people problems are probably the biggest thing that most businesses face, you know, how to great, get great people and how to keep great people and then how to make sure the culture is an incredible place, um, you know, to come to work and, and, and to live and breathe in. So that's been a big one. I mean, I think the biggest strategic mistake I've made is trying to uh, launch business chicks into the US. Um, that was, a, I mean, filled with a billion different uh, learnings and, and teaching within that one lesson, but ultimately it, it didn't work. And and some of the lessons I learned there were that things take at least twice the amount of time you think they will and they will cost you, I don't know, I, I mean, this is not science, <laughs> but, you know, at least five times what you expect yeah. they will. And also if you are trying to take your brand or your business global, just really understand the nuances of different um, you know, regions and locations. And a lot of people said to me, actually, it would have been easier for you to start a business in China rather than the US because even wow. though we you know, share the same language and, you know, we get our pop culture from the US and obviously, you know, we, we travel back and forth. It's just, it's so different to um, Australia. So there were heaps of learnings there, but um, yeah, ultimately that was a big, a big lesson and a big mistake. Well, not, not a mistake. I mean, it's a, it's a funny word, isn't it? The word mistake to me feels really finite. Like it, um, yeah. And, and, and it wasn't necessarily a mistake. I mean, I, I grew as a person, I grew as an entrepreneur, I grew as a mother, I grew in so many different ways. So there was so much goodness to be taken from that lesson or that mistake. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps in a little way. Oh, absolutely. And I do think, I mean, even if it's, you know, firing a client or, you know, saying no to a bad customer or whatever it is, I think that that is a number one challenge that a lot of female business owners have is saying no or wanting to, you know, not upset someone or offend someone. And so we see this, I guess, trend, it's not really a trend, but people start ghosting these days, you know, people would rather run away and ignore their email than just yeah. be honest. And I love yeah. honesty. If someone could give me some honest feedback and just say, hey, Jess, look, I've decided to go in a different direction because of this. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I can grow. I've now got feedback and I've got, you know, peace of mind. So what yeah. tip would you have for someone who, I guess, would prefer to ghost or to run away than facing, you know, letting someone down in a way? Yeah, I think that's an awesome question and massive learnings to be had there. I, I think it takes a lot of courage and I think more than anything, it takes practice. So just starting off with the little tasks and finding what language works for you, you know, like the way the words come out of your mouth are going to be different to the way the words come out of my mouth, but it's really about finding what works for you and, and just practicing over and over and over. And it can be really challenging for people to say no, but, you know, I've really... 
understood the sort of relationship between time and the, the time that it can take for you to decision make whether you're going to say yes or no to a bad client or a you know deal or whatever the situation is but the the shorter you can make that decision making time and the quicker you can learn to find the language to say hey this is not for me but thank you so much for the opportunity or hey things aren't working out as the what you know the way I thought they would be so um, I'm going to move on here like, again I, I can't sort of train you what that language is is but it's really about practicing over and over and over and I found it really really awkward and difficult in in the first you know few years of my career to be able to turn people down and I thought oh they're going to hate me and they're never going to want to talk to me again but really like we just have such a short period of time to mobilize and activate and build and you know we really need to maximize every single minute so and I, I think also I talk about this in the book people will respect your directness you know they'll respect your and they'll, they'll, they'll look up to you for, um, you know, for asking for what you want and for being direct and, and not leaving them with any shade of doubt as to what's in your mind. So I, I just think the advice is practice, practice, practice until it becomes second nature. And um, yeah, I know I, I try and coach my people in my business to do that. And, and for some of them, they really struggle. But now it's like, oh, cool, that's easy. You know, it's two, two minute email or a three minute conversation on the phone and then it's done. And it does get easier. I promise you, it does get easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh good well I'm glad it gets easier because that's amazing and at least people can look forward to that um yeah. one thing I love about you is your ability to just make things happen and like you've titled your first book winging it you know in a way so what do you think is the biggest reason why I guess you know we live in an age where there's more information out there than ever there's more ways to gain finance or you know overcome these things that people often use as excuses but yet mm. there's so many people sitting in jobs they hate or you know not going after their goals or not making it happen and mm. I love that you shared you know a very very inspirational and raw story about how you actually rented your house out on Airbnb in in the US um, and mm. and that was when you were launching into the US you had a big successful business and people sort of think that when my business grows, I won't have these problems, right? So we often hear about <laughs> people doing these things in the startup phase, but you had a highly successful business in Australia, yet you were packing up your big family um, every time you got a booking on Airbnb and, and let someone else rent your house so that you could make a bit more money. So I just yeah. love, love, love that because it shows that you're never too big or successful to have these challenges come your way. And it's a great way of thinking because when you grow bigger, there's going to be bigger challenges coming your way as well. Um, yeah. But what I would love to know is how can people inject a bit more of that thinking? Because I think a lot of people see their external resources and they say, oh, I don't have time or I don't have money or I don't know how. And then they mm. just stay stuck mm. so yeah. what would your biggest advice be on overcoming those those excuses yeah listen I absolutely hand on heart can um you know resonate with what you said there and there have been many 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 times in my business you know life and, and career so far where I felt completely stuck and completely overwhelmed and like a failure and like it was all over <laughs> it was all going to end um and certainly the time you talk about that I that I tell that story in the book was one of them um I think I think it really comes back to acknowledging the truth you know and acknowledging okay I feel stuck I feel overwhelmed you know and not trying to brush it off and go no it'll be fine it'll be fine you know it's it's not fine you're allowed to experience these feelings and you're allowed to admit that you don't have the answers so I, I think having that vulnerability is a is a real strength and being able to put up your hand and ask for help so when all that went down and the business didn't go the way I planned in the US you know we did have to do some pretty radical things to survive and I did have to call on a lot of people for help you know so I have a wonderful business coach that I've worked with for many 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 years who um, you know I turned to and we did sessions and we we still work together um, to this day which is fantastic I think so I think I think self-awareness and acknowledging the truth of how you're feeling is really really important um, I think having really great people around you who can hold up a mirror to perhaps your language and your self-limiting beliefs, you know, that we we are so, we are meaning-making machines, right? And we tell ourselves stories and, you know, we're conditioned from so many different angles, you know, whether it's society or the family structure that we were brought up in to believe certain things about ourselves. But 
the reality is that we have the, you know, neuroplasticity or, we, you know, whatever, we have the flexibility to change how we view ourselves and our skills and what we want from our life. So I think really um, understanding that and knowing that anything that we want is absolutely possible if we change our thinking is a really, um, you know, crucial kind of link to, to make, you know, and I, I grew up in a wonderful family, you know, really loved and um, attached and, you know, very ordinary but beautiful childhood, but we didn't really have a, any money and, um, you know, I dropped out of university after six months and, you know, I you know, nothing in my childhood or my early story would tell you that I could go on to build what I've built, but I really got hooked on personal development from an early point of, um, you know, from really my teenage years and started reading every single book I could get my hands on. I watched every single DVD. I listened to, it was actually cassettes back, <laughs> back then, cassettes. And, you know, I go to these workshops and seminars. I really just tried to educate myself and change my beliefs about what was possible. And what I learned from a lot of these teachers was that many of them were self-made and they just really worked out how to, to get great people around them and, you know, be a little bit more courageous every single day and continuously stay curious and open. And, you know, when you, when you start to believe these things and you change the way you view yourself, like I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, I have, you know, whatever, whatever the, um, you know, beliefs you have about yourself, when you start to change that languaging, honestly, like a whole new world does open up. And these, yeah, I don't know, it's just... Um, it's 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 self-development right it's working on yourself and instead of whining and complaining and bemoaning your circumstances like do, get into action and do something and I, I don't know what that is Jess it's gonna be different for you yeah. than it is for me right but all I know is like if we continue doing the way things have always been done that we're going to get what we've always got right so you know if you're really unhappy in some area of your life or the job you're in or the relationship you're in like you do have the power to make decisions and change something I know that much for sure oh, amazing no that is such a valuable lesson I actually did a whole lesson on changing the wording around marketing um not a lesson sorry a whole podcast episode on just yeah, changing right. that wording and magic yeah. happens and I even had a a message from someone who listened to that episode and she said that she invested $300 into a branding that she knew she had to do but she'd put it off for so long the very next day she got an order for the exact same amount so mm -hmm. it just kind of shows do, 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 do. <laughs> it seems wild until you kind of do yeah. it and experience it yourself yeah. but I think words mm -hmm. and your self-talk are one of the most important parts but people often overlook that and they just want give me the strategy and tell me what marketing I need to do and and they yeah forget about it's, you, you're so you're a hundred percent spot on you know and I think I always still find it kind of mind-blowing that to this day I'll bring what I believe is a business problem to my coaching sessions right and so I start off oh and then this happened and that happened and then my coach will kind of distill it down and then we'll work out it's, it's just like I'm looking at it in a certain way and I have some sort of limiting belief that is having me see that problem through a lens of my own conditioning right so when we can break that down you realize that like you're, you're so much more than what you think like you're you're a whole machine with a heart and an intuition and and there's so much more than just like what you think about things right so yeah I, th I think just again coming back to that awareness and really questioning yourself and and getting out of your way and not being so stubborn and arrogant is a really beautiful way to yeah to to, to grow yourself and and to get start to get the results that you want really Incredible. No, I think that is so, so valuable coming from yourself as well, you know, who's built this amazing business and supporting so many women out there. Before we finish up, I would love to ask you, what is a favorite quote or, or lesson or some sort of saying that you like to live by? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, as a couple, I think one of my favorites that I always come back to is if it is to be, then it's up to me. And that one for me is, is really just about like, if I want something, it's within my power to change it or get it, you know, and I'm, I, I try not to think about, oh, but, you know, I've got to rely on this person or I've got to ask that person. Like if I want anything, it's only up to me. There's no one else who's responsible for it, you know, and I, that has worked for me in so many areas of my life, you know, from childbirth, like there's no one else who can have that, that baby for you through yeah. to growing businesses. Obviously you do it with a beautiful team around you, but ultimately, you know, if you're the leader and you're the founder, you set the tone and you set the pace for how things are done in your company. So I like that one. And the other one comes from Dr. Martha Beck, who I absolutely adore. And she said, if something's not working, don't do it harder. 
And I love that because I think this sort of speaks to the whole themes of this book that we've just talked yeah. about in this episode. You know, it's really about just don't keep on doing things the way they've always been done, right? Like there's no need to do that. And we've been served up this huge opportunity and this huge moment to bring in some perspective and to bring in some critical thinking and to really start to question if we're doing exactly what we want to be doing and to make some changes if it's not, you know. And I, I know that that can always be really confronting and really, really difficult, but the opportunity is here and I would just hate to have people, you know, have it pass them by and think it's all good, you know, nothing changed. You know, I really want people to kind of sit down and, and pull out a notebook and, and just really question themselves and, and, you know, see if there isn't a way that they can create a new way of being for themselves and, and create whatever it is they want from their lives. Because I think, I think that moment is here and it's now and we can grab it if we really want it. Oh, incredible. I think both of those two summarize this podcast, but also your book yeah. so well. And I think there's such important lessons for anyone to take away. So I'm so excited we got to end on such an amazing note. Um, but I just wanted to say I am so, so grateful that I've been able to chat to you today and celebrate the launch of your new book, The New Hustle. And I will have all the links in the show notes. So everyone can go and get their hands on the book, because like I said, there are has never been a better book that I've been able to digest. I find a lot of books can sometimes, my mind will go wandering, but I love how it was laid out in sections and, and it was just really, really great. So if you're not a big reader, this book really is for you as well. So thank you so much, Emma, for joining me today. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for having me on. I really loved our chat. Thank you. Wow. What an episode. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. Just a quick reminder, if you did enjoy this episode and you would like to win a copy of Emma's book, The New Hustle, make sure you screenshot and share this episode to your Instagram stories and tag myself at jess.williamson8 and Emma at Emma Isaacs on Instagram. And the winner will be announced on September 15th. So stay tuned and good luck.